Hey guys, this is the Jaeger task guide for shady business. For this task, you have to find three secure flash drives in RAID and then hand them over to Jaeger. And just so that you guys know, if you are having a hard time finding these in RAID, then you are able to craft it at Intelligence Center level two. So for this task, you do need to find flash drives and the overall best areas to find the flash drives are for the most part going to be safes as well as filing cabinets. However, this wipe, I have found several flash drives in the backpacks of scavs. So make sure that you do check any scavs that you eliminate during your raids whenever possible. So reserve and streets are both amazing to go for filing cabinets because they do both have a couple of areas that have several filing cabinets in close proximity to one another that are rarely hit, which will help you to be more efficient with your looting. One of the huge negatives with reserve though, is that all of the PMC extracts are absolutely horrible. Horrible, so knowing that I will usually go into raid with the intent of taking the no backpack extract So I will wear basically any rig with a lot of space that I do have in my stash so that I can still make money as well as extract safely now, your other option for reserve is to basically use your scav every single time that it does come available because all of the scav extracts are actually quite good on that map now this route that I'm going to show you guys, most people do avoid this part of the map for the most part, which is the black and white night buildings, which have seven and five sets of filing cabinets respectively that you are able to access without keys. And you can also add in the white queen building, which is right next to the black knight, where there is another eight filing cabinets that you can access without a key. Now, if you're not fully comfortable on reserve or you want the best possibility of having a quiet and chill looting raid, then I would recommend going at nighttime because most people who are going to come to reserve at nighttime are going to be trying to avoid PVP and just tasking, or they are going to the bunker to try and get less contested raider kills. I will be showing you guys the route during the daytime though, so it is easier for you to follow where I'm going. Now I am just going to be showing you guys the route that I take for the three buildings up above ground, but if you are feeling brave, then you can also go to the underground bunker where there will be another 14 filing cabinets for you to loot in close proximity to one another. However, that is a major hotspot for PVP and reserve mains are literally no joke when it comes to PVP and especially in that specific area. So we're here on reserve and the dome is up here on the top of this hill. We are going to turn directly around and then head into the white knight building. Once we go in through this door, then we are going to go into the second room on our left where we will find two filing cabinets. And after you loot these, then we can go all the way up to the third floor since the second floor is blocked off where we will find another filing cabinet on the right side at the top of the stairs. Once you loot this, I do typically check the two rooms that are going to be on your right side down the hallway for possible gas analyzer spawns, as well as other valuable spawns. And then we will head out onto the rooftop area. And then there is two drop down holes, but we will be taking the one that is on the left on the far side. And that will bring us down to the second floor. Then you're going to head into this room that's on your right hand side where we will find another two filing cabinets for you and then after you loot these then we can drop down through the balcony and land on the sandbags beneath us to not take any damage and then we're going to make our way heading across the open area towards the black knight building once you enter into the black knight building by entering in the door on your left hand side then we will go all the way down just before the stairs and enter in your last door on your left there where you can find one filing cabinet behind the bookshelf in that room. After you loot this one, we will head up the stairs and go into the first room on your right on the second floor, where there are two more filing cabinets for you to loot there. After you finish looting here, then you can make your way up to the third floor, where you will find three more filing cabinets in a single room, as well as a jacket that is on your right hand side. And after you loot all of this, then there is also a filing cabinet in the very last room on your right hand side at the end of the hallway, as well as some PC blocks that you can also check for additional loot. Now, after you loot all of these, then you can either make your way to the no backpack extract or whatever extract that you do want to use, or you can move on to the white queen building. I will be showing you guys the route that I take into the white queen building. And then that way you will have the option to either add that onto your path or to just go and extract. So as I move to the white queen building, usually I do take the metal exterior steps on the back left of the building up to the third floor. And then I start up there. So once I enter into the building, then I will open up the door on my left hand side, enter into this large room, and then you will have two filing cabinets, one that is immediately in front of you and then the other one that is on the far right side of that room. After you loop both of these, then I will move out into the hallway, and then the room on the right-hand side just before the stairs has one more filing cabinet for you to loot on this floor. And then once you're finished looting here, then just go past the staircase and then down the elbowed hallway until you find a room on your left, which you can open to find another filing cabinet on your left-hand side inside of that room. After you loot this, then we are going to go back to the staircase and head down to the second floor. On the second floor, you will have two filing cabinets to loot. One is going to be inside the room on the far left side of the room directly across from the staircase. And then another filing cabinet is going to be in the room just next to that on the right-hand side after you come out of that room. After you've completed looting this and we can move down to the first floor, you're going to go through the graded door and then you're going to continue on past the exit to the building to the door on the immediate right after it. You're going to open up this door and then you will find two filing cabinets on the right side of the table inside of this room. So after you've looted here, then I do recommend that you can either move towards your no backpack extract or towards whatever extract that you do have. If you are a scav, then there is also one additional area that you can go in order to loot filing cabinets on your way out of the map. 
And it is especially convenient if you do have the checkpoint fence scav extract because the two filing cabinets are going to be located inside the building just before the checkpoint fence, which is located just at the base of the dome hill. So now I'm going to bring you guys over to streets and there is two locations on this map that I would recommend for this task, both of which are hardly ever looted. The first location is going to be the building for the population census task just outside of the you've got mail apartments next to the playground. And other than people going here for the population census task, you will rarely ever find people inside of here. And you are going to have eight filing cabinets that you can loot in here in this building all on the first floor. The first room is going to be immediately on your right hand side. After you loot this, then you will find a filing cabinet in the back room that is closest to the you've got mail building building and then just across the hallway from here we will have the room with the large countertop in it you will have four different filing cabinets in this room the first one's going to be horizontally on the far left corner of the room and then you will have three that are going to be behind the huge counter the second location is going to be in the opposite side of the original streets map by the large cinema so looking at the cinema here if you turn directly around as if you are going to go towards the marked room then you are going to go inside of this door here and then head down the hallway you will come to an office and inside of here you will find one filing cabinet on the far right corner and then if you turn immediately to your left, as soon as you go in through the entrance of this room, then you will find three more filing cabinets there. Once you loot through this room, then we can leave out the way that we ended up coming in. And then you're going to take a left and head down the road towards the Sewer River Extract. And about halfway down the road on our right hand side, there will be a safe that's just off the road on the sidewalk there that you will be able to loot. And then after you loot the safe, then we can go through the red door that's just on your right hand side. You will take a left and then you're going to find a storage room on your right hand side where you will find two additional filing cabinets. And then basically after you loot this, then you will be able to go and then extract at whatever location that you do have for that raid. Either one of these two streets locations are going to be by PMC or scav extracts. So they are definitely worth checking on your way out of a raid if you do happen to be around there. Now, if you would rather just do safe runs, I find that Reserve and Shoreline are going to be the best in terms of safes that do not require keys in order to get to. On Reserve, you will have four safes total. Two of them are going to be locked behind the RBK PRL key, though. So if you can get your hands on that key, then you will have three total safes bundled all together just outside of the dome area where there isn't much traffic. But you definitely don't require that key you can just go up to the dome and then run the one safe that is in the guard hut that is always open and then you can make your way down to the fourth safe which is going to be all the way underground to where the entrance to the d2 extract is located on the opposite end of that room so we will head down the back entrance of the dome here and then you're going to go all the way down the metal staircase of the dome until you get to the underground area and then you're going to run down this hallway until you hit this metal door you're going to open it up and then this is where the entrance to get down to the d2 extract is located so then you will turn left run up along this metal area until you come to a door at the back of the room you're going to open this up and then in the back left corner of the room is where you will have a safe as well as two sets of filing cabinets now on shoreline you will have 11 potential safes but five of them are going to be available to you without a key or without putting yourself at great danger so the first area that I'm going to show you guys is up at the weather station where you will have one unlocked safe on the second floor of the building just next to the PC block and as a bonus you will also have three filing cabinets that you can also loot on the second floor as well. And then the other location that you are going to have is two of them at the pier where you will have one on either side of the second floor as well as multiple filing cabinets that are down on the first floor that you can also loot. But again the only problem with the pier location is that once you do go down to this area of the map you really only have one way back out of it so just be aware of that and go to the pier at your own risk. And then the last area where you can go to in order to get access to two safes is up at the unlocked cottage. So it is going to be beside Sanitar's cottage where you do require the cottage back door key. However, this one with the safes is going to be open all the time. So you can just open up the doors, head up to the second floor, and then you will have one safe in one bedroom. And then you will have another smaller safe inside of the other bedroom. Now, if you want the absolute best way to run safes in Tarkov, then that is going to be at the customs map at the dorms building areas. However, this route will require you to have five separate keys, which can be quite difficult to find before you get the flea market. Or when you do get the flea market, then they are going to be expensive to buy early wipe. But realistically, there are no better way for you to do the safe runs due to the density of the safes in such a small area. You do have five safes within the two dorms buildings and then the keys that you should keep an eye out for or at least try to buy from the flea whenever you can get them for a decent price are going to be the dorms two-story keys 105, 110, and 114, and also the three-story keys are 204 and 214. And like I mentioned, you do end up paying a little bit more for them early wipe for sure, but you can definitely make your money back and then some throughout the wipe by hitting these rooms anytime that you do head to dorms area, which I know for me is one of the most traveled to areas during a wipe, and the amount of tasks and just the amount of times that you end up playing customs, the opportunity is definitely there for you to make your money back if you do end up overpaying for these keys. 
So in the background, I am just showing you guys the location of the locked rooms where you can find the safes on customs. So into the three-story dorm building, then 204 is going to be located on the right-hand side. Once you come up the main stairs, you have to jump over top of this mattress and then it will be immediately on your right. And then 214 is going to be at the opposite end of the hallway, just at the exit closest to the car extract. And then moving across over to the two-story dorm building, then you will have 105, 110, and 114 all on the first floor of the two-story dorms. 110 and 114 are going to be on the far left end of that building, and they're going to be directly across from one another, whereas 105, you will have to exit the building again and then go in through the external entrance on the end of the building where you can go into the gated area, and then 105 will be the last door on your left, just next to the graded fence. And I did also want to add in one bonus location on Woods where I do tend to find at least one of my flash drives every single wipe. And this location is going to be at the campsite tent that is just next to the Overlook Rock next to the beach and the sawmill. It is always a good idea to check this tent whenever you do pass by because like I said, every single wipe, it does tend to give me one of the flash drives that I end up needing for my tasks. So just always remember just to check here at this tent whenever you are passing by and extracting when you are doing tasks on Woods or just passing by the area in general. So hopefully this guide does help you guys to find the flash drives that you need in order to get this task over and done with thank you guys for stopping by and checking out this video if you're still here at the end i definitely appreciate you and i hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day so what you're seeing on the screen right now is just a couple of my different social links in case you guys wanted to connect more easily i am primarily streaming on twitch now multiple nights a week so if you do want to connect with me or my community that would probably be the easiest way to do so and if you do come over to the twitch and you want to join the discord community then just type exclamation point discord or cord in the chat in order to get an invite link and if you don't use twitch then i do have a link in the picture as well as a link below in the description and we are growing and currently have an active and welcoming community with people of all experience and skill levels so there will always be someone who could help to answer any questions that you may have. As always, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching the video, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.